All right, folks. Cool. You're, all right, folks. You're live with Lonzo, the Godfather of West Coast Hip Hop. And the other day, I was sitting around. I was listening to a commercial on KJLH. And I heard a name that I said, I'm going to call my boy and see if I can get him to do the podcast right quick. And I dialed him up and he called me back. And today, thank God, I have a guest on the show that's a legend in this game, folks. He is a true legend. And come to find out, we related. My guest today on the show is Mr. Lenny uh, 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 Williams. What's up, Doc? How you doing today, man? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, out here, uh, today's not my landlord day today. You know? Ah, collecting that rent? Are you victim people? <laughs> no, neither one. Yeah, I, I, somebody called me last night and told me the ceiling. Uh, oh. I'm like, oh man, it's one of them days you don't wish you wasn't no landlord. Yeah. Now you, uh, now do, you, do you do your own work, Lenny? No, no, no. I got uh, a couple friends and I uh, got the little yellow pages, black pages, or something like okay. that. I, right. I used to do some of that work, but oh man, the, the, Bad back, bad neck, uh, all that kind of stuff. Lazy, you know. I, I got yeah. the same diseases, man. I got uh, the same I, diseases. I got a little money in the bank. It's just like, <laughs> oh, I, I just pay somebody, you know. <laughs> well, how they treating you otherwise in that, Doc? Otherwise, everything is good. God's good. Oh, my, my little baby daughter's house, yes, and uh, hanging with her for a minute. Yeah, I had to bring her some soup. She wasn't feeling good, so. Oh, okay, you said, I you daddy mode, too. That's a good thing, Doc. Yeah, so she working from home today, and so. Had to get a snicker, a little soup over here. The boss can't stand having that good old Thai soup. Yeah. All right. Hey, check this out, Lenny. You know, for for, the, for those who don't know, which I can I can't really imagine who who don't know. But for the youngsters out there who don't know your legacy, your legacy and your history, give them a brief uh, background on yourself, man. Will you please? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm from uh, raised up in Oakland, California. You know, originally from Arkansas, and. Uh, Came out here and, uh, you know, started singing in church like, you know, most people do. And, uh, you know, went to church with the Hawkins family, Ed and Walter, mm-hmm. Tremaine, and, uh, Sly Stone, the Stewart family, and all of wow. them. And then, uh, you know, in the, uh, the late 60s, uh, you know, started, uh, you know, trying to, you know, make some records and uh, hooked up with uh, John Fogarty from Creedence Clearwater and he wrote a couple songs. And then in, uh, I think, 1971, uh, I mean, uh, this, well, probably like 1971, 72, I started writing for a group called Tower of Power. Power, Power. And then uh, in December of 72, I joined the band as a uh, as a singer. And okay. we put out uh, So Very Hard to Go and What Is Hip and all those songs like that. And uh, had some hits. And then I left the band and started doing my own thing. And uh, eventually, you know, uh, went to ABC Records, Motown. And... Uh, MCA records, you know, old relic uh, doesn't exist anymore. Mm, wow! And uh, you know, made records over there. Did the song "Cause I Love You," which uh, you know is uh, my signature song that I wrote and sang. Okay. And uh, you know, just been doing music. You know, did uh, stuff with Kenny G on the the, the sixteen million seller. You know, okay. did the song "Don't Make Me Wait for Love," and uh, you know, just been out here just. Uh, Getting sampled and, uh, ah. and enjoying that, and you know, uh, enjoying getting new, uh, you know, new fans, new sampling, and plus, you know, making a few dollars because I, I was able to, you know, have my own publishing and stuff like that. Ah. yeah. Now, Lenny, yeah. I do this show for two reasons. Man, one man, one reason is to to bring some of the folks, man, that people they they know the name, but they don't get to hear from you that often, and also to educate some of the youngsters who want to be in the game but don't have no idea of the value of their product. And I find that's really, it really bugs me. You know, when me and my buddies laugh sometimes, we hip hop is the only industry that will make music to give it away. Okay, the mixtapes. You know, you right. go to the studio and make a, make a song, pay, <clears throat> pay engineer, uh, producer, the whole thing, and then give it away. And right. we're the only ones to do that. So when I hear you saying that you, you were a songwriter, you were a publisher, and I gotta ask you this, who wrote Cause I Love You? Uh, me and my friend Michael Bennett. Uh huh. Yeah. Man, I know doggone well. I, I know my little publishing checks be looking good. I know them some guns. It changed your life every three or four months. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was really interesting. Uh, you know, when I first wrote it, you know, I made some nice money off of it, and I was like really excited about it. And then when uh, Kanye West and Twister sampled it, I was somewhere, and it was royalty time. My wife called me. He's like, "Hey, you got uh, your royalty statement came here." She said, "But it's." It's like an encyclopedia. <laughs> and she said, you better come on home. So I came home and I opened one of it. 
and it was ninety four thousand dollars for for writing the song. Then I wow. opened the other one, ninety four thousand for being the publisher. I was like, oh Lord, have mercy, you know. So, wow. and then um, it was just interesting, and it and it just kept on coming, you know. Kept and it, and I'm still getting paid off of that song, and I think that was in nineteen eighty six. I think it was, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Man, I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm so I'm so waiting for somebody to sample one of my songs. One of my one of my songs was sampled by Master P, uh, mm-hmm. Mr. Ice Cream Man. And but I was somebody that was, was you know, it, was, it, did, it went platinum, but that was about yeah about 20 years ago. So it kind of diminished for me for, as far as that's concerned. I need a new sample. Somebody sample my stuff so I can give me some cousin any checks. God dog it. I know, I know, I know. Hey, I'm waiting for somebody to sample me too. And then uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Young Jeezy and uh, 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 Jay Z and uh, Andre 3000 sample another one of my songs. Let's talk it over, and I got a nice check off for that. But you know, but the one with the, you know Kanye West was before all the streaming came along. You know, streaming done knocked out a lot of right the money that you get off of uh, you know your performances and stuff like that. I guess at some point in time it's going to even out. You now, know? Lenny, did you, have have you have you checked in the sound clock? I mean, uh, sound exchange. Sound exchange and getting my money from sound okay. exchange all right. and all that. Yeah, yeah, right. that's, yeah. that, that right there changed my life. Made my day makes me a lot happy every month. So mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, it's all kind of ways, it's new ways of, of distributing music, but it's always new ways of getting paid too. So just had exactly. to ask you that. Just had to ask you that. Hey man, I, I mean you are gigging something terrible these days. I mean I've always see you, I always see you on the festivals, whatever the case may be, but you stay busy, man. Yeah, you know, it really is that song because I love you, you know, because I can work on the blues tours, I can go to the jazz shows, and I can even do some gospel, you know, some of these gospel plays, uh, you know, do that. So now I got a question. Almost for every you. genre of music, I can, you know, I can, I can go do something. Yeah. Now, now my question to you is: Has it always been like that? No, it hasn't. Yeah, I mean, I had a down period, you know. I mean, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the the that started out and I thought it was, you know, might last six months or something and mm-hmm. wound up lasting about eight years. Wow. You know? <clears throat> well, that's when um, the fact I had publishing and that I had bought real estate, you know, mm-hmm. you know, in the good years, you know, okay. uh, paid off, you know what I mean? I had something to, to fall back on, you right, know, so right. that's why I say, you know, to youngsters when they, they start out, you know, you get that first piece of money, you're going to always have to live somewhere. So buy yeah, you a right, house, you right. know, Right. And that, you got that, then you got, you know, you got play, always got a place to live. Right. And then you start trying to build, you know, from that, you know, maybe get your little rental property or something, or, you know, if you know anything about stocks and bonds or some of that, you mm-hmm. know, or, or do something, you know, uh, start your little business or whatever. But you always have a place to live, and then you, that way you're not, you know, uh, you know, you're not wind up destitute, you know, and they're going to be on the, on the news, you know, living on the street or something like that, you know, so you, you know, those are the, that's kind of advice I like to try to give to young folks. That first check, I know, you know, you want to go out a car, you want to buy that watch or whatever, but, you know, get that house. Don't get nothing too big. Right, you know, right. Get something that you can handle. Right. And then, uh, you know, uh, even if you have to go get a job, you know, it's like, hey, I can always pay this house note. You know, that 2500 right. I think I paid that forever. You know what I'm saying? And then, right. uh, and, uh, you know, that's the kind of way to go. Yeah. What now? You come to LA in, in, in uh, sometime in January, right? Or February? Uh, uh, I think it's February. Yeah, February, okay. right? Got to be with the uh, Enchantment and who else? Uh, I think it's uh, New Birth. New Birth and uh, the boys. Woo, uh, uh, Harry, Harry Williams and them. Uh, oh, uh, Harry Williams. Mo- the moment. Not no, Harry Ray. Uh, That's Harry Ray. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, no, uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, I die. uh, yeah, yes. that's um, damn, why are we having brain farts? Oh, come on, I don't baby. know, I know why I'm uh, having brain farts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, right man, now. come on, yeah. man, I, we, I know that song, I, uh. Uh, yeah. Natural High, and I can't yeah. think of the name of the, of the group right now because I got a red light in my Blood face. Stone. Blood Stone. Blood there Stone. you go. 
Man, yeah, something about serious. these red lights get to flashing sometimes, boy. It just, <laughs> it just will make it erase your mind like like uh, like that dog on Will Smith movie, man. Just uh, you can't think of nothing when that light is on. Anyway, okay, Bloodstone. Okay, I heard about yeah. the show. Mm-hmm. That's what made me want to give you a call. I'm gonna give him a buzz and see what's happening. I'm gonna come out to the show, man. I'm gonna come out and hang oh, out. Oh, cool. With you, That's man. gonna be fun. Uh-huh. I'm yeah. gonna come out and hang out with you. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm mm-hmm. looking to uh, maybe even uh, interview New Birth and some old folks backstage if I can. Uh, oh yes. uh-huh. I, yeah. Because like, you know, I, I think it's amazing, man. That um, that as much as you and other guys have done, I know you do interviews all the time, but we don't hear we don't hear from you. We don't hear that backstory, man. You know that that real story. That you know you've been in the game how long? What 35, 35, 40 years oh. now? 50, about 53. Uh, 53 yeah. years. Now, mm-hmm. when I first saw you, you was with Tower of Power. Right. And I think I told you this, man. We have another cousin that we used to lie and say he was you, okay? Because y'all looked that much alike back then, okay? Uh-huh. One, of my, one of my other cousins on my daddy's side, y'all look just alike, okay? And we used to lie and say he was you, and, you know, we all that old bullshit or whatever. But, um... We, y'all didn't want them checks, did you? Y'all didn't get none of them checks, did you? Now you got Nan check yet, okay? <laughs> got Nan check yet, okay? But yeah. it, was, it was just funny, man, because uh, when Aubrey called, and Aubrey's another one of our cousins, and right. and he connected us, and we didn't know we were cousins. I've always been a fan of his. And uh-huh. when we, I think you guys were watching Welcome to Death Row, and Aubrey, J. King was in there, and I think I know. Uh, I get a phone call and put, on, put, put you on the phone and kind of find out we cousins. Man, that's, that's amazing, dude. Right. And it's really funny about Arby Jr. Uh, I used to ride the the uh, the Air, Air, Arby Jr. had because uh, you know he was from Richmond, right. California, but he was working down in L.A., living down there, and he would right. come home on the weekends. And I used to ride the airplane with him every week. He said, "Are you Lenny Williams, man?" And then he would bring his <laughs> uh, bring his CDs and stuff up, uh, and have me sign. This was before CDs. Bring his albums, have me sign them. What? And, stuff. and so then we didn't know we was cousins, and then. Um, his dad died, right? Okay. Uh-huh. And so then my daddy didn't like to go to films. He said, I want you to go to Richmond. My cousin, my first cousin died over there, and I want you to go to the funeral and represent me. So I went over there, and I saw Arbor Jr., right? He said, uh, I was at the house, right? Okay. And he said, uh, what you doing there? I said, oh, uh, the man that died, that was uh, my, 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 my dad's uh, first cousin. He said, that was my daddy. And I said, him first, and me and him talking. And seeing each other riding the airplane every week, because I was, I was, you know, I had a little place down there in LA, and I'd go down there, okay. you know, on, on come down, come home, and then go down there on the weekends and fly back and uh, and see Arby Jr. and 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 that's how we found out we were cousins. And, wow. And, and then later on, you, yeah, right. So it's just a, a small, small world. And then Man. come find out my wife grew up with him. They went to school together and everything. Yeah, she called him Bear. Yeah, Joe Bear. I know Bear. 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 That's Arby Jr. Right. Yeah. That is. Really yeah. funny, man. I, you know, yeah. I, I think I heard the story, but it, I guess it just slipped my mind again. I forgot uh-huh. that that's how we connect. That's right through Aubrey and his dad, uh, Big Aubrey, was uh, is your your dad's dad's cousin. Bro, uh, bro. Yeah, right. Yeah, they. Uh, they my my grandmother was Washington. Yeah, okay. Right, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, and then you know, then the Williams and everything like that. Yeah. So okay. it's like I get down there in Minden, Louisiana, and everybody I see is. It's some kind of cousin, you know. Yeah. Now, you know, I have never been to Minden, Louisiana. I'm sorry, I've passed through there on tour a couple of times, but I've never, uh-huh. I've never been through to visit. And um, I need to go down there and see who, see who was who, because I'm, I'm quite sure somebody else that, uh, that made a record or something is related to us some way, form, or fashion. Right, exactly. I went down there uh, a couple of years ago and went to the graveyards and just seeing all those people down there and seeing you know, those Williams and Washingtons. You know, mm-hmm. different names, you know, that I know, you know, related to the family. And it was just uh, just interesting, yeah, right, to just be there and, and went to the old church they had down there. And them you know, old folks built that church, you know, you know, you know, by their own hands and everything like wow. that. So it's a great experience. Now, you know, um, you say you sing, you sing with gospel, R&B, everybody. Mm-hmm. When you, when you, when somebody calls you and tell you you're about to do a show, Mm-hmm. Who is your favorite lineup that you like to play with the most? I mean, you got—I know you—I know you got a lot of friends in the game. You've been doing this for fifty-three years, but I'm quite sure there's some groups that you you prefer to play with, you know, or some you may not prefer, prefer not prefer not to play with. Who is your favorite mm-hmm. group to play with? Mm-hmm. I love doing shows with the OJ's, uh, the Whispers. Uh, you know, those are, are some of the groups that are—you know—because you have nice crowds and right. and, okay. then, and they're nice people. You know, you, okay. you know they they they're friendly and. 
you know, you don't have a lot of hassle, you know, because okay. a lot of times, you know, you can't use, you know, if you've got, the, you know, your band, their band playing, you can't use this, you can't use that, mm. so, you know, just different things, you know, but it's, uh, but, uh, you know, there's some nice people out there, you know, so the groups like that, I really enjoy you, I enjoy their music. And I enjoy their friendship. Yeah. Okay, that's cool, man. I'm glad to hear that, Doc. Because you know, so many, so many rap groups get out there. They can't, I can't stand so and so. And I, I, I knew that wasn't a fact with uh, with R and B acts. I guess we just cut from a, cut from a different cloth, Doc. And you know, I'm just glad to see that all these brothers that's been around so long have a, a camaraderie and they would hang out and do shows together. Who who do you find is the hardest to go after? Ooh, there's some, you know, there's some good acts out there. Yeah. If, if, there's some when good acts when like the promoter that. tell you, hey man, you after so and so, who do you go? God dog it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. I was on tour in the eighties. Go ahead. Okay. It was me, Richard Pryor was a headliner, and then uh, I, I was opening. Then it was Patty, and it was Richard Pryor. Mm. So we get to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and "Cause I Love You" is the number one song there. Okay. So then the promoter says. Okay, Patty, you opening the show, and Lenny going on right before Richard. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh, Lord, you ain't done me no favor in the world. I got to come on behind Patty Bell, right? And so then Patty, she didn't like it, so she went and got Richard. You know, cause, you, know, you know, and so she went to Richard, and so Richard came down, and he he was down there for about two minutes, and he saw that he couldn't change the promoter's mind. So Richard's like, hell with it. I'm going to go upstairs and do what I do, you know? Okay. okay. And, uh, and so I had to, so the show came and the lady said, no, cause if people come here and they come in late and Lenny done already done his show and they don't hear that cause I love you. They're going to be wanting their money back. Mm. I'm going to have a problem. They might get to ride around here. So Patty came on first and I had to take a deep breath and <laughs> do a whole lot of praying and go on behind Patty LaBelle. I tell you, uh, I did it, but it, you know, I, I didn't really enjoy, it. you know, the, the crowd, they, uh, you know, they, they came through for me and, you know, that cost I love you uh, brought me on through, but it was, it, that was an experience I never wanted to, to have again. You know, coming on behind Patty LaBelle. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I could imagine. Else. I could imagine. Mm-hmm. I, I uh, when I was on tour, I hated coming behind Roger and Zap. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. No, oh, Roger and Zap. Yeah. God, yeah. Come on, man. You're going to uh, what? How are we going to do that? Yeah. Okay. I, I've had to do that too. I did that up in Denver one time, uh, come on behind Roger and Zap and they, you know, uh, all the, the, the clothes changes, oh. and the dancing, and the instrumentation, and, and, you know, Roger was a consummate performer. You know, it, was, it was tough, but, you know, sometimes, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's, the gig. that's the gig, and that's the way they, you know, the promoter, the man who paying the money, that's the way they want it, and uh, you just got to go on and do what you got to do. Yeah. Hey, I ain't mad. Or sometimes, you know, there'll be situations where the headliner has uh, got to go somewhere else. Right. And, you know, they got to, you know, get on the road and they might say, okay, instead of us close the show, we want to go on up the third slot and whoever was going to do the, the slot, you know, at that time got to come on behind us. And you're right. like, oh, man, I, I just got to, I got to go on behind Charles Wilson. I got to go on, on right. behind Frankie or whatever, right. you know, and it's right, like, right. but, you know, it's like, well, you here, you got to just do it, you know? Yeah. You no, know, you know what, man, most people don't realize that, um, and, and that's, that's something I even didn't realize that, that I'm just talking to you right now and it just dawned on me i've always talked about the bay area music scene mm-hmm. you know from the hip-hop perspective you got the digital on the ground the e40 right. the tupacs mm-hmm. the each too uh, short too yeah. short right. yeah. but man uh from the r&b perspective y'all got a deep history up there as well oh yeah we got deep history uh, frankie beverly and mays uh Sly stone uh wait 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 yeah. frankie beverly they, they from up north well, you know, they, you know, he came out to to California from uh, was he from uh, Philadelphia? But okay. you know, they was they was called Raw Soul, and you know they oh. hadn't written any of those songs, so they came out here, and and then that's where you know he met Marvin out here, and okay. then you know, and you know, Marvin used to come up to Oakland all the time, and uh, and then uh, you know that's so that's where they formed. Um, uh, yeah, form that group up ah, here. Yeah, right I never now. knew yeah. that. See, I'm learning. I'm mm-hmm. learning something. That's why I like doing this because you, you know stuff that I don't even know. That's good to hear that, man. So mm-hmm. Frankie Beverly yeah. made Slide Stone. Who else? Um, Confunction. Confunction. Right. Right. Felton. Them. Yeah. yeah that's right. They yeah, from uh, and, East. What, what are they from? from? Vallejo. 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 Right. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Confunction. Uh, that's what Slide from too. Right. Okay. The Whispers. Yeah, the Whispers got their teeth up here. Okay. You know, they was from uh, you know Fresno, L.A., but. 
you know, they, you know, this is where they, you know, got their musical start. All their first managers and stuff was right here. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so we had all kinds of groups from up this way. And, you yeah. know, and as I think about that, man, you you guys have a very diverse, very diverse musical scene, hip hop and R&B. And I think mm -hmm. about West Coast sometimes. We started off kind of diverse in the beginning, but we, everybody became gangsters. It's a little different. Right, it is a little bit different, right? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you, you had all the what Fillmore Slim and all them those right, guys up here, right? Terrible right. Tom, you know, they was uh, they you know, gangsters slash uh, you know, artists, yeah, right. Or artists slash gangsters, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think they started off artists slash gangsters, and then the gangsterism took over, and they became more gangster than they were artists, yeah. Okay. But now you know, Slim's doing music, you know, he's eighty something. Fillmore Slim, so Fillmore Slim doing music. Oh yeah, uh, you know he's an uh, excellent guitar player, and uh, and you know Fillmore Slim can sing jazz. He can sing uh, Moody's Blues. You know what? if you can sing that, if you can sing that, you can sing anything. All uh, them changes in that. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, man, I'm mean, gonna get him on my podcast. That'd be dope. Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah, I gotta hook you up with him. Yeah, do that, sure. man. I would love yeah. that. I would love to yeah. have Fillmore Slim on my show, man. I would yeah. love that. That would that would be a great show, man. Yeah. I'm I'll hook that up uh, today or tomorrow. I'll get that for you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm a, my, next, my next phone call is going to be to Howard Hewitt. Okay. Mm -hmm. now, yeah, matter of fact, I'll be, Howard and I were on a, on a cruise together here a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. If you ever need an old school DJ on them cruises, tell that promoter, man, holla at, at your boy. I got my stuff. I'm ready to go. I got a bag by the door already packed up, ready to go at any given time. I heard that. Uh -huh. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I would love to do something like that, man. But anyway, Lenny, man, I I thank you for taking the time out of your day, dealing with your daughter, come out and hanging with me on the, online for a minute, give us some history about the Bay Area and your uh, your whole history, man. I appreciate it. But I'm I, I love because I love you. But my favorite song is mm -hmm. with the oom foo foo foo. Okay, a shooter foo foo foo. Right, yeah. Man, when I first yeah. heard, man, I heard that song, man, I just fell in love with it. Okay, I got to get it too. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna download that. Good looking yeah, out. I did. Uh, I did that. It's really funny. I was down in LA, staying at the the Holiday, uh, no, the the Hyatt House. It's okay. The Riot House on, on Sunset. <laughs> okay. And uh, one of my friends called me. He lived in San Diego, and I said, I'm in the studio. And he's like, "Yeah." He said, "Can I come down? Yeah, bring your guitar." And he came down. And I, we sat on the side of the bed, and I was like, "He said, what, what you want to write?'" And I said, "Let's write a shuffle." Was Lou Rawls that had the hit with a shuffle, and Navico was having hits with those shuffles. I said, "Let's write a shuffle," and we wrote that. And then the next day, took it to Frank Wilson. He said, oh, man, I love it. He was a producer. Okay. And then two days later, we was in the studio, Ray Parker Jr. and all them, and we was cutting it. Yeah. Wow. And then the next thing you know, it was out. I said, boy, that was, it was just, show business was popping, you know, for me there. And it was just a, just an awesome, awesome thing. Yeah. You know what, uh, what part of the old school, I, I know I'm about to wrap this interview up, but I got some more questions now. What mm -hmm. part of the old school game did you, that you don't like that with this new school, this new school situation that you do like? Well, the new school, I like the fact that, you know, that it's, it's easy, it's cheaper to make records. Okay. You know, it's cheaper to make records and that you can be independent if you know how to handle independent. Right. Okay. And the part about the old school I like is record companies because you didn't have to, I used to hate record companies. I mean, I looked at them like they was the enemy. Okay. But then it was, I did a record a few years ago, and one of my friends, Larry Batiste, he's a big shot with Naris, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna get your record nominated for a Grammy, right?" Mm -hmm. And 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 he had put some horns on on one of the songs, so he said, "Well, send me the CD." So I sent the CD, and he came back and said, "Damn, Lenny, you didn't even put my name on there." And I was like, "Man, let's see if I was with a record company, they mm -hmm. have somebody that handles all that." Right. Cool. Right. Who wrote this? Who wrote that? Who put the horns on there? Who did that? Who's singing background? You, they're going to make sure that you get everything. You know, right. I'm trying to do all of it myself. So, you, you know, a lot of times you, you know, that teamwork, you know, you got mm. somebody, you know, when you, you sleeping or, you know, you might just be goofing off somewhere, right, you know, right, right. somebody's over there working, somebody's promoting the record, somebody's on the phone, right. you know, doing this and doing that. So, so, uh, yeah, so I miss 
the you know the the teamwork of the uh, record company, but I enjoy the fact that you can have your independence and you know and make your own records. Uh, but you know, if, if, with that independence, and people say I want to have my own business, but sometimes they don't realize that people that have right. their own business, they might make a whole lot of money, but they work hard too. You, you work know? hard, work very you hard. Know, you, you, yeah, people that you know that work for them is punching in at nine and punching out at five and you know, they there. start at seven and right. and at eight o'clock they still working, you know. You still know there. you know, wake up wake up, go to the bathroom at one o'clock and, and gotta grab the notepad and write something down, you know. Yeah, so so yeah, it's just you know it's blessings on, on, on both sides, you know, mm-hmm. of the of the coin. Yeah. You know? okay. And you know, and then there's you know negatives on both sides of the coin. Yeah. That's true. Hey Doc, once again, man, thank you for taking time out of your day to uh kick it with us on the show right quick. As soon as I get this uh, all edited up, I'm gonna send you a link to it in the meantime my guest is my man my cousin mr oh 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 lenny williams on the line L- lenny thank you again doc much love to you i appreciate you now happy uh, holidays okay. all right same, same to you right now peace